And now I'd like to bring in this week's Line of Opinion panelists to get their take on the recent campaign stops in New Mexico and the current political climate as we get closer to our primary election here on June 7th. I'm joined in studio this week by Tom Garrity from the Garrity Group PR. Former State Representative Janice Arnold-Jones is here. <laughs> Sophie Martin, an attorney and editor of DukeCityFix.com. And attorney Mary Torres with the law office of Mary T. Torres. I like that. Welcome back. Good to see you again. Absolutely. Tom, starting with you. Uh, Mr. Trump came to Albuquerque Tuesday. He's the presumptive Republican nominee at this point, and some big Republican names in the state did not show up to be with him. I would say almost the entirety of the uh, Republican delegation here, as it were. Um, but he also had a couple of things to say about our governor, uh, Susanna Martinez. I want to start there. How did you take that when you heard him telling her she needs to do a better job and getting a big cheer in the crowd and the whole thing. That's very well, strange. Yeah, it was, uh, it, it was very surreal. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, to have a Republican, presumptive Republican nominee come in and right. slam the, you know, sitting Republican governor in the head of the Republican in front of her Governors voters Association. As a yeah, fact, it's right. her hometown and her mm -hmm. home crowd. Um, you know, I thought it was interesting. You know, obviously, you know, uh, you know, Mr. Trump has a different way of doing things. Right. And I think we saw that play out in a number of different ways. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, how he addressed the governor, I thought, you know, it was was, it was unfortunate, but you know what? He, he just kind of put the facts out there. And right. yeah, he got the years a little bit wrong, but you know, yeah. I think he did a good job of assessing the current state of affairs here in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. Janice, let me turn to you on this. What did you make of that when you heard that, that bit? Well, I'm saying uh, Republican primaries are tough. It is an inside family thing. <laughs> and you, when you're finished, it takes a little bit of time. But I think he is reacting to the governor breaking a very important rule amongst Republicans, and that is leaders are in position of leadership don't endorse in a primary. And she did. Gotcha. And I think, she, I think he was reacting to that. Right. Um, I agree that the, the dates, I mean, as far as the economic situation, I, you know, was he spot on? Yeah, this is a tough situation. Mm -hmm. Is it all the governor's responsibility? Probably not. And he tried to lay it there, but it's not. Mm, interesting point there. Mary, we had a lot of things happening mm -hmm. at that event beyond Mr. Trump. It was his rally, but there was a whole lot going sure. on. Sure. Um, as you heard, and, and we all saw a little bit earlier on the show, we had some guests coming in, came in and talked about the, the protests and such. Your initial take when you saw the protests, did you watch them via CNN? Were you watching them live? Did you catch up them with them afterwards? What was your point of entry, and how did you feel about them? All of the above. I mean, okay. my, my office is downtown, so I was down there at the beginning, mm -hmm. and it was unfortunate that the coverage didn't show that it was, it was peaceful and that there were protesters that were there that were very righteous that um, at that that were there I mean my my friend Gianna Mendoza was there holding her sign you know she's sure. she's a second third ge generation immigrant mm -hmm. and um, holding a sign saying I'm a lawyer not a murderer her sister I'm a teacher not a rapist and that is going directly to Mr. Trump's comments when he gave his opening speech in June of 2015, when he said Mexico is sending us its rapists, its criminals, etc., that hit it hit a chord. It hit a chord with me. It hit a chord with a lot of Hispanics, but not just Hispanics. Mm -hmm. I think just really anyone, any person of color. I think that that did hit a chord. And then you have his comments on on the Muslims, and then his right. comments with women. You know. Uh, it was a, it was charged, but it wasn't charged at the beginning, and and it wasn't charged until you know I think around seven ish or so, and I I watched his comments mm -hmm. live mm -hmm. um, online and and saw what he did, saw <laughs> Javier being mm -hmm. escorted out, and Javier and Benavides saw the comments right, right mm -hmm. and 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 heard his comments, and and you know and I heard the comments about um, Governor Martinez, and I have a different take. I. Please. I, I think, why was he doing that? Was he hoping that maybe I'll garner more Hispanic votes? Will I, will I do that? Because I, I don't think that engendered him to the Hispanics. Mm -hmm. Is it something about her personally? Could it be because she, wasn't, she hasn't endorsed yet? Well, neither has Paul Ryan. Well, but she endorsed earlier and I somebody know. else. I, I, I agree. Yeah. I, right but, but yeah. you know, I, I think that there's, there's other issues. And then is it because um, mm -hmm. he's just not a fan of hers? He, he does kind of go after women. He went after mm -hmm. um, 
governor, the governor of South Carolina, sure. Nikki Haley. Sure. He's right. gone after her day. too, and mm -hmm. he's you know he's done that. And I I just thought that wasn't it wasn't appropriate. Mm. And I think that I mean she is really I think the highest ranking female Hispanic in the nation right. right now as right. head of the Republican Governors Association. Mm -hmm. So I thought. What were you thinking when you were doing that? And, right. and I, I thought it was just really, really awkward. And I wish you wouldn't have done were you, that. Were you surprised, mm -hmm. Sophie, by that as well? There's, or? there's a, an armchair th psychologist or psychiatrist him now for a moment. There's something <laughs> yeah. about Donald Trump that seems to be kind of like a, a little kid. You know, you tell me that I have to. We, we had people, pundits saying and, and Republican leaders saying, you know, the best possible vice president matchup for him could be Susana Martinez because right. in one person we have both the woman issue and the Hispanic mm -hmm. issue. And it feels sometimes with Trump that he's like, oh, yeah, you say that? Well, I'm going to do the exact opposite. I'm going to mm -hmm. burn it down. Mm -hmm. And and we see that over and over again in his rhetoric, in his positions, um, in the people he surrounds himself with. There is this very um, defiant for lack of a better way to put it, uh, streak in him. And that appears to be something that appeals to a certain portion of his followers, his right. his part of the electorate. Um, and so surprising <clears throat> to see him double down on that kind of thing? Not really. It's not something that makes me think, oh, well, he's going to grow into a presidential role. Right. It, it makes me wonder whether he's going to make it to November without burning things down. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, that's an interesting point. I haven't really thought about that. And it, it, it dovetails into Mary's point. Mm -hmm. If ostensibly, if the idea is the Republican Party needs to get more Hispanics into the fold right. as voters, was this the way to do it? No. You, you know, you know what I mean. It just some, something seems sort of I, off. I there. don't. I don't think that it was the way to do it. But yeah. then, you know, to give respect to Trump supporters, and there are a lot of Trump supporters right. out there That's right. that are really upset with the status quo, mm -hmm. that are really mm -hmm. upset with people not getting things done, et cetera. He does bring that voice mm -hmm. and he does bring that part to the table. Mm -hmm. But what what is what's scary for me is he makes these these statements and I'm wondering, is he is what he's saying, are people really, do, are they believing that? Mm. Is that how people really feel? Gotcha. Do people really feel that um, all Muslims should not be here? Right. That if you have a Hispanic surname, you shouldn't be here? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a 13th generation native New Mexican, so I shouldn't be here? Right. Do, do people really but, want but that right. wall? I got to ask you, is that you know? really what you hear? Because that's really not what he said. Mm. He didn't say that. He did not say, all Mexicans were raped. He didn't say that, but he did. He didn't clarify. I, I agree with you. So, in terms of political speak, mm -hmm. do I think that he's very cavalier? Yes, I do. Because those of us who've done this, we're very mm -hmm. careful about. Mm -hmm. You don't use words like "all" and "never" because right. you're going to get into trouble. <laughs> he did. He had to go back. He has, and I, I came up with. Some, I looked up, and I just typed in comments Trump has made about Hispanics and all of these comments that he's made have been and I mean his direct quote when he made his announcement he says quote when Mexico sends its people they are not sending their best they bring criminals they bring drugs they're rapists some I assume are good people so he makes that kind of comment mm -hmm. you know and, and he has he, he threw out Jorge Ramos you know, right. and told That's Jorge right. Ramos That's in right. August of 2015, go right. back yeah. to your country. Right. You know, and so those kinds of comments, when you put all of that in context, and I think that's that's where our protesters were. Mm -hmm. That's why they were there peacefully exercising sure. their First sure. Amendment right. No, but that's where they were. Let me ask one more quick question uh, over uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> you are a bit of a role there. Uh, you are a Republican. Yes. How does this make you feel about everything? Will he have your vote? Will no. he have? Your, okay. <laughs> Absolutely not. And I, I mm -hmm. will say that does not mean that Hillary Clinton has my vote. I mean, okay. I am seriously it's for the first time thinking Gary Johnson, <laughs> which I'm like shocked. I'm thinking that, but I cannot. I can't vote for Trump. But I mean, I have family members, brothers who are going to vote for Trump, and so I really, because of that, I'm. 
I'm really cautious and I respect them. They are respected businessmen mm -hmm. and I respect mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So I have to s see, you know, what is it behind there? But the, his, his comments and his rhetoric on Hispanics uh, is, um, and not just Hispanics, okay. on blacks. I mean, his mm -hmm. comments in mm -hmm. June, he said that, this is a tweet, the overwhelming amount of violent crime in our major cities is committed by blacks and Hispanics. A tough subject must be discussed. Mm -hmm. So I remember it well. Yeah. And that comment, so he mm -hmm. is blaming crime on race and ethnicity. And that's where, mm -hmm. I think that's where people were. That's a good point. Know, Thank so. you for that, Mary Torres. We really appreciate that a bunch. You were making a point earlier. I, I, I apologize yeah. for cutting you Well, that's okay. There. It's mm -hmm. just been interesting to sit yeah. back and watch and sure, listen. Sure, that was terrific. I don't necessarily agree with a lot of the comments and feedbacks that I've seen okay. on the interview. I haven't seen the interviews, the one-on-ones on site. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in this whole political theater, because that's what it is, it's political sure. theater. Sure. Uh, you know, I think that Albuquerque found a way to out-Trump Trump. Trump. Uh, to really kind of take that bar when he had such a great opportunity to say, we can have a respectful dialogue here. We might not agree with the person, right. but we're going to have a respectful dialogue. And that didn't occur. Right. And it didn't occur. Uh, and Southwest Organizing Project is to blame, I believe, in large part, because um, mm -hmm. what has happened here is, is that you, know, you have an organization that's into civil, dis civil disobedience who on a regular basis goes and disrupts public meetings. They take over city council. They take over the Bernalillo County Commission. Mm -hmm. And we as a community sit back and say, you know what, that's not right. And so what happened with the Trump campaign outside is they had a party and they invited everybody to come in. And yeah, you know what? When you have a party like that, you have folks that you don't invite, but you know what? You're still responsible for them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And, and as a result, you know, it, it yeah. gave Albuquerque a huge black eye. I, I, I don't want to speak for Swap, but we had Emma Sandoval here as, yeah, as, I saw you, the as you said earlier. Yeah. You know, they had made the invite, but they certainly can't control what happens, I wouldn't think. Well, I mean, folks, if, you if you throw a house party, yeah. just to use that, and other people come in and somebody ends up getting a D, DUI, yeah. I mean, you're still, as a house owner, responsible for that particular issue. Now, I know that the parallels are not, you know, are not sure. completely aligned, but sure, the sure. general theory of the argument is, is that we have an opportunity for some, some educated, <clears throat> informed dialogue. Mm -hmm. Trump is going to shoot himself in the foot. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole Pocahontas comment was oh, just was deplorable. Just, and he's going to do himself in. I mean, right. those who don't like him, right. just let Trump be Trump, and he's going to implode. He hasn't I yet. You, I think <laughs> that, I mean, that's a frightening <laughs> thing. But I think, to, to Tom's point about, mm -hmm. about Southwest Organizing Project, what I see there is that they saw, to use your metaphor, they saw the party was going to happen no matter what, and they attempted to take steps to calm the situation. Yeah. Those protesters, I think the early protesters and the late protesters, the ones who, who engaged in some violent mm -hmm. actions, I think that they were going to be there no matter what. But it's and an organization that consistently goes in and disrupts public events and public meetings. And that is, I have to say, that's a form of legitimate public speech. It's, it's within their rights to do that. I, I think that SWAP is talking about and engaged in important issues to our city, right. to our community. And these are, they're representing people who don't always have a place at that table. Exactly. And well, they have plus, a place at the table. But mm -hmm. they had people there to try to de-escalate. They had all those but people wearing do, their green. How do green? having people inside protesting now, and trying to well, shut somebody down? How know, does that work into well, really having a public dialogue when you, you have look, everybody outside? Well, if you that's look the dialogue on, the, on the outside, in this situation. if you look on the outside, they had them there. They had those protesters there. Yeah. And I watched this, and I, I saw them saying, you know, trying to de-escalate, de because when they were going through that walk of shame, <laughs> they, the protesters were giving as good as they were getting. Mm -hmm. And they, there wasn't some, some de-escalation there. So I, I don't believe We're going to have to wrap this up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Regret. That's okay. No, no. No need to apologize here. Ever, ever, ever. I do have another point that we're going to come back to the line. We discuss a UNM partnership and a proposal to manage Sandia National Labs.